Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name is William Jordan, writer of 204 FM's Night at the Manitoba Museum. We're right in the middle of a pandemic right now, so if you wanted to go to a museum at the moment, you'd be fresh out of luck. You'd just have to go outside, social distance, and make do with the tedious splendor of nature. But worry not, fellow old stuff enthusiasts, because technology is here to help. Some of the world's top museums have brought the experience to the web, so you can get that same anachronistic thrill far away from coughing mouths. And so, to keep you from feeling stuck and isolated here in Winnipeg, I present William's Top 5 Online Museum Experiences, starring me! Number 5. The British Museum the British Museum in London is widely regarded as one of the best in the world. Built in 1753, it is an embarrassment of historical riches. We're talking the Rosetta Stone, the Elgin Marbles, the statue of Ozymandias that inspired the Shelley poem, and that's just the first floor. It is an awe-inspiring treasure trove of beauty, historical relevance, and questionable artifact ownership. But for any museum fan, their online presence is an absolute delight. Their collection is digitized, allowing you to spend months going through the museum's literal millions of objects, some of them rendered in lovely 3D. You can wander through the museum in Street View, which just looks incredible in VR. There's a Museum of the World program that allows you to go through time, with each dot representing a different object at the museum. When you click on each dot, you'll get a picture, a detailed description, and audio guides featuring calm British voices. This brooch is Irish and dates back to the late 6th or early 7th century AD. Yes, straight to my veins, calm British voices. They also have a monthly podcast, which is super charming. But the real highlight is the British Museum YouTube page. It's chock full of fun, bite-sized, internet-ready historical content, including a cooking show walking you through how to cook ancient recipes, curators talking you through the museum's highlights. I'm going to talk to you about my favorite artifacts in the museum, which are early Anglo-Saxon swords. And even a let's play of the world's oldest board game, the Royal Game of Ur. It's truly a blast to explore and comes with my highest recommendations. Number four, the Louvre. The Louvre in Paris was originally built in 1546 as a palace for French royalty. But after the French Revolution, when royalty was no longer in vogue, the building was opened up to the people as an art museum in 1793. When Napoleon came to power, he created an entire military division whose sole purpose was to fill the Louvre with the best art the world has to offer. Today, it's the most visited museum on the planet. During peak season, wait times to get into the Louvre average at two hours. But using the power of the internet, you can skip the line. The Louvre has digitized museum highlights and even has a high resolution virtual tour of key galleries, allowing you to wander through the famous museum at will. For VR fans, the museum offers a free experience that allows you to step inside the museum's most famous inhabitant, the Mona Lisa. Due to crowds, most people only get seconds to appreciate the famous painting when visiting the museum, but the virtual experience takes you deep into the many layers of the Da Vinci masterpiece. Number 3. The Scream VR and while we're on the subject of using virtual reality to explore famous paintings, Edvard Munch's The Scream is about as famous as they come. And so matching it with VR was really a no-brainer. This free experience takes you into the dreamlike world of The Scream. It's frightening, interesting, anxiety-provoking, pretty much everything you'd want from The Scream. I don't want to spoil too much with this one, because the experience is really worth it. But if you have an Oculus or Vive headset and half an hour to spare, this is really one of the best short VR experiences around. An absolute must download. Number 2. The Vatican Museum the royal families of Europe couldn't ever hope to compete with the decadence of the papacy. The Vatican Museum in Rome houses some 70,000 masterpieces, acquired or commissioned by the Catholic Church over the centuries, spanning from the best of ancient Rome to modern masters like Dali and Van Gogh. 
The website features high-res virtual tours of museum highlights, such as the Pius and Clementines Museum and the Raphael Rooms. But for the best experience, you'll have to hop on over to Steam and download El Divino, a fully three-dimensional tour of the museum's showstopper, the Sistine Chapel. Using the Unreal Engine, Il Divino renders out the chapel in all its glory, allowing you to see it the way only the Pope gets to, with no crowds. It allows you to get up close and personal with the works on the ceiling, with a virtual platform Michelangelo style. It's best appreciated on the Vive or Oculus, where the effect is stunning, it really makes you feel like you're there. But for those of you without the kit, worry not. There's a mouse and keyboard option that allows you to walk through using your computer monitor. The program features some 100 clickable elements where you can learn more about the chapel's history. Be sure to give this one a download. And number one, Google Arts and Culture. For sheer gobsmacking quality and quantity of museum content, nothing even comes close to Google Arts and Culture. Collections from over 2,000 museums are hosted here. The Met Museum in New York alone has over 200,000 artworks digitized on Google Arts. The website hosts virtual tours of some of the best historical sites and museums in the world. One moment you can be virtually walking through the Tokyo National, and the next, the Frida Kahlo Museum in Mexico City. From the Hermitage in St. Petersburg to the Doge's Palace in Venice. They have audio guides through famous paintings featuring even more calming voices. Evelyn the Morgan draws influences from pre-Raphaelitism and aestheticism. They have ultra-high-def uploads so you can really see every detail of famous works. They have 3D rendered locations and artifacts and that is just on the website. If you download the app on your phone, you get even more features. This includes art transfer, which changes photos that you take into styles of famous artists. Art projector, which uses AR technology to show how large a painting would be on your wall and how it would look in your apartment. It's easy to spend hours falling down the rabbit hole of Google Arts and Culture. But as amazing as these virtual options are, they are no substitute for actually stepping into the building and experiencing the place for yourself. So let's all stay safe, take care of each other, and hopefully soon, we'll all be supporting our local museums again. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 204 FM's Night at the Manitoba Museum. Winnipeg, a place where two rivers meet. For centuries, people have meeting, been meeting here, but most of them have continued on their way. But some of us remain, remain, remain. Welcome to One Trunks 204 FM. It's our area cone, we're under six feet of snow for half of the months of the year. But it's familiar. Uh-huh. So what if mosquitoes bite? The floods are all right. Cause we get into the news for other things and being racist jerks. jerks. And we're together. Yes, we are. Well, some may wish they could go. Go Jets! Well, where would you go, go Jets! Jets! And why would you go, go Jets? Jets? Go! We have an NHL team, car co-ops, gourmet donuts, hundreds of independent coffee shops, conservative government. Ikea! Target! Not anymore! We're good enough. enough! We are a pretty legit real city now. And we're together on 204 FM. On 204 FM. These are stories of Winnipeggers, as imagined by Winnipeggers, for Winnipeggers. Tonight's episode three, Night at the Museum, by William Jordan III. Performed by Toby Hughes, Robin Slade, William Jordan III, Gord Tanner, and me, Gwendolyn Collins. Featuring our musical guest, Red Moon Road. <laughs> and now, without further ado, get ready, get set, tune in. Please listen carefully. You will hear a little collection of sounds, and your job is to figure out what it is, what's going on. Let the sounds paint a picture in your mind. Here goes one. Two. Three. (laughs) 
And now, here they are again. One. <laughs> two. <laughs> three. <laughs> Stay tuned to find out what these sounds mean later in the story. But now... Shoot all you like! You'll never take us alive! We best do what they say, lads! But man! Get in there! Whoa! Well, hi there. You must be wondering a couple of things. Like, who am I and what all that hubbub was about? Well, I can't tell you everything just yet, this being the intro and all. You'll find out more as the tour progresses, but those folks were Ken Leishman. Hi. Francis Cornish. Hello there. Lord Gordon Gordon. Good morning. And Nellie McClung. Hi. Real Winnipeg Originals. <laughs> Some of you may have heard those names before. Some of you maybe not. And that's all right, because I promise you by the end of this here ride, you'll know a lot more about them. Heroes or villains. Not always easy to tell in times of moral flexibility. As for me, well, you can just call me a guide of sorts. A floating soul in the negosphere, helping folks like you make sense of this here journey. Follow me into this city's portal of time. Watch your step now. <laughs> Now let me see. Hmm. Welcome, ladies and gents, to the Manitoba Museum. Some of you might know it well. Others haven't been here since your grade five field trip. I'm about to introduce you to a person who is central to our story, Mabel Ferorki, a woman in need of a bit of guidance. Follow me, gang. I think I spy her over by the admission counter, giving the poor desk clerk a bit of an earful. Gosh, Mabel, you're such a silly goose. That's what my Bill used to call me, his silly goose. And he was my knight in shining denim. I swear, he would have gotten married in his jeans if my mother hadn't threatened him with a rolling pin. I wouldn't have minded, of course. That's just the way he was, my Bill. Oh, he's passed, of course. Seven years. It was his heart, God bless him. Doctors said he had an abnormally large left ventricle. And Bill said, oh, oh gosh, Bill said, it's full to bursting with love for you, you silly goose. Aw, I do miss him. It's not every day you meet a soulmate. The clerk's spotty adolescent attitude simmers with the apathy of a thousand distinguished sons. <sighs> she ignores old Mabel's ramblings instead opting to Snapchat her harrowing experience. Mabel, unaware and therefore unfazed, continues her tale. Anyway, that's the reason I hate coming downtown. Everyone has those crazy, empty eyes. Sometimes I do believe the zombie apocalypse has arrived. Yeah, that's great. Would you like to rent our exclusive audio guide for $15.88? There's a 10% seniors discount every other Tuesday and Friday. My grandchildren said they'd meet me in the lobby here, but I guess they have better things to do than go to the museum with their old grandma. I don't blame them. We do tend to tell the same stories over and over. I guess it's because we think they're important. So was that a yes to the audio guide? It would have been nice to see them, though. I've been so sad since my house was broken into. Did I tell you that my house was broken into? Yeah, that's great. 1588, please. Oh, oh, all right, all right. Uh, just let me see what I have in the old purse. 5, 10, 15, 15, 25, 15, 50, 51... 52. That's great. Just go up to the first exhibit and press one for your audio guide. Oh, thank you very much, young lady. Here we go, Mabel. The first real exhibit. Oh, a plastic representation of a First Nations person riding an Appaloosa horse. I bet there's a long story behind that. Okay, let's see. Press one. From our mouth to your brain, it's the Manitoba Museum Audio Guide, where man and nature meet. Our first stop is our historic front foyer. If you look to your right, you'll see our fabulous gift shop, filled to popping with the latest non-such swag. 
For more information, please press three. Oh, press, okay, press three. Does that mean three buttons or should I just, um, oh dear, oh, oh my. You have pressed the panic button. <laughs> we are sorry you are so easily flustered. S sounds of gentle waves will now be introduced into your headphones as a passive reminder that there is no need to panic. We will always be there for you. Oh, well, that's, that's very comforting. Um. And with that, Mabel and I were introduced. That's right, I'm the Manitoba Museum Audio Guide, that all-knowing, all-seeing chaperone to all things Manitoban, including Mabel Ferorki. Oh, Mabel, what are you still doing in this heck hole of a city? You should have left years ago, years ago. The sound reverberates around the chasm-like room, only to be overtaken by the raucous singing coming from deep, deep in the bowels of the building. Oh, oh my. Hello? Hello? Where's that singing coming from? Hello? Oh my good, hello? Oh, look at you! Oh, look at this! Construction workers! They're outside, they're inside, you just can't get away from them anymore. Now, I don't think you're supposed to be in the uh, exhibit there, Mr. Autumnal Construction Worker. Uh, that sign says not to go over the bar. What are you doing in there? Drinking, fishing and drinking. It's a pretty boss combo, comes with my most righteous recommendation. I don't think you'll catch many fish in there, dear. It's just a diorama. Is it? It is. Is it? It is, isn't it? Well, why don't you hop on over and have a sit with me? Oh, I couldn't. I've never broken a rule in my life. <laughs> It'll be our little secret. Scout's honor. I won't tell a soul. Oh, goodness. You know what? Okay. Now, here we go. Just okay, you just, oh, you climb oh, over. Oh, yep. Up. Really? Yeah, and there you oh, go. Oh. oh, look at you, you punk. You're brave one brave granny. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh. So... <laughs> What now? Well, you just enjoy a little bit of fishing. Here, you go. You grab onto that. Okay. Um, yep. You, uh, oh, and whatever you do, don't let go of the rod. Okay, you, you Bye. 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 Um, okay. Whee. Well, this is so nice. I can barely remember the last time I went fishing. Why, it must have been the time that Bill and I took that little trip to Lake of the Woods. Bill always loved his fishing. I was so afraid to get in the boat. Mabel, you silly goose, Bill said. Don't you know nothing bad ever happened in a boat? Well, I knew he was mistaken, of course, but somehow I wasn't afraid anymore. Oh, that was Bill through and through. Always made me feel like the world was a pretty good place. <sighs> oh, what's this? Oh, oh, my jeepers, I think I've caught something. God dang it, fish, you're gonna pull me in! Oh my goodness! Whoa! 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 Well, old Mabel didn't know it at the time, but that pond there had just a touch of waterlogged magic. She submerged herself in that dank waterbed and started floundering, sinking her way down and down. But you know what they say, one man's sinking is another man's floating. Long before, or before long, she sank so deep that she came straight out the other side. Oh, Mabel, you clumsy oaf! Oh, goodness, that pond was much deeper than it looked. Oh, mm. oh, this place looks different somehow. And old Mabel was right. She was in the Negosphere. <laughs> A place a lot like here, but just a little sideways, upside down, inside out, where all Winnipeggers of days gone by live in perpetuity, along all the hopes and dreams that live on in their children. But more on that later. Someone's coming. You there! Didn't you see the sign, No Fishing? But, but, but that sign wasn't there before! Ignorance is no excuse. Fishing in the Moose Sultan's woods is a federal offense. I'm taking you to the Sun Queen. Moose Sultan? Sun Queen? I didn't mean to be a bother. I was just holding it for a friend. <laughs> like we haven't heard that one before. Move along, prisoner. We're burning fluorescent daylight. 
I'm taking you to the nonsense. Prisoner? What have I done? Hermit top, hermit top, hermit la, hermit top, hermit top, hermit top. Now entering the nonsense exhibit. For more information, press the albatross button on your console. Who are all these people? Welcome to the Legosphere, prisoner! <laughs> Listen to us or we'll take your sight. Halt! Who wishes to enter the flagship of the Legion? It's me, you clot. Fresh meat for the queen. Fresh meat? Oh, oh dear, I'm a vegetarian. All right, climb aboard. Remember, no food or drink on the ship, and please go backwards down the ladders. <laughs> <laughs> Well, looks like old Mabel has found herself in a bit of a pickle. The negosphere, you see, is ruled over by the polite and courteous collective fists of the normality police, a totalitarian force dedicated to maintaining business as usual throughout the negosphere. They don't care for outsiders none, especially outsiders who break the rules. They make their headquarters here on the Nonsuch, a ship housed in the museum. Their captain, Sun newspaper conservative columnist Sarah McIntyre. Tireless crusader in the defense of the status quo. Here in the sphere, she's known only as the Sun Queen. Here comes the Sun Queen. How dare you disturb my hot yoga before I found my center? You had best have a good reason for this unmannerly intrusion. A prisoner for you, your majesty. We found her fishing in the Moose Sultan's pond. I didn't mean to. I didn't see the sign. Well done, Lieutenant. Good evening, my dear. I am the Sun Queen. No doubt you've heard of me. Uh, she's fresh from the meat space, your majesty. I should have guessed. She still has the fleshy stink of life on her. What's your name, little meat sack? Uh, Mabel! Mabel Ferorki! What's a meat space? <laughs> you mean you don't know? What a poor, ignorant little bug you are. The meat space is where you're from. Loathsome, horrid, stinks of life. Not like here in the negosphere. Ordered, disciplined, low tax rate. Mabel Ferorki, you are a very long way from the meat space now. You have broken the laws of the universe, transcended space and time, and entered the bottomless realm of the negosphere, my domain. I still don't understand. That's irrelevant. I'm charged with keeping the peace in this land, a peace that you've so callously broken. It would be my distinct pleasure to remove your stink from the sphere. Lieutenant? Yes, my queen. Take her to the maximum security exhibit. Detention indefinite. And may the maker have mercy on her soul. Namaste. <laughs> oh dear. Do 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 do. Why are those anchors so big? So the ship doesn't fly away on us, of course. She's been trying for a millennia now. Poor thing. <laughs> oh no! Don't throw me. In you go. Whoa! And forget I said anything about the ship. The Sun Queen would have me quartered if she finds out. Oh, Mabel, you haven't committed a crime in your life. How did you end up here? You mean you don't recognize us? What? what? We took over the front page of national newspapers. They threw every one of us in jail for crossing the boundaries of acceptable behavior. We're famous. This is the greatest criminal And feminist rabble-rousers. And feminist rabble-rousers of Manitoba diorama. Maximum security. Greatest hive of villainy on the sphere. And it was all right here. Ah! Calm your scream box down, a noodle ace. 
We don't mean you any ill doings. Who are you? Well, this canceled stamp here is Francis Cornish, first mayor of Winnipeg with a criminal record as long as a Winnipeg winter, making him the worst mayor this city has had not named Sam. I resent that, Nellie. I was elected with more votes than there were people in the city. Let's see old Sammy try that one. <laughs> That charming bandit next along is Ken Leishman, husband, father, and thief who brazenly stole $4,000 worth of gold bullion from the Winnipeg International Airport and hid it in a snowbank at River Heights. That well-known den of iniquity. Okay, uh, here, here's a question for you. Okay, what has two thumbs, is a genius, poet, lover, and pilot so daring they called him the Flying Bandit? I don't know. Oh, oh, you're pointing at yourself with Me. your thumbs. The one who cuts a mean figure in the kilt is famous con man Lord Gordon Gordon, named so nice he used it twice. Swindler, imposter, and fraud who extorted millions of dollars and caused an international incident by pretending to be a Scottish pal of Queen Vic. Now that's a mission impossible for you. And I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for, well, the Michigan militia, the RCMP, Jay Gould, and the collective will of the American people. <laughs> And that big fella over there in the cage is W.T. Poo. Less said about him, the better. Let's just say his friend's check bounced. <laughs> Bouncing is what Tiggers do best. Oh, my. Any questions? I, I, I hadn't realized that Winnipeg had such an active criminal element. We're going to need your help, Ace. We've got to get out of this cell, this museum, and more importantly, the Sun Queen's domain. And you're going to need to play along, got it? Oh, dear. I'm not sure I'm the play-along type. I wouldn't make a very good senator. No time to waste. Gordon, Gordon, release the mosquito. One, two, three. Help! Guard! Guard! There's a mosquito in here, and it's out for blood! What? Stand back, prisoners! Get him. What? Hey, get him, boys. <laughs> hey, hey, Leishman, take my sash and tie him up. Okay, thanks, Gordon. There, he isn't going anywhere. Right, team. We have about 30 seconds to find the key to unlock Pooh's cage. After that, we'll have a horde of apathetic security guards to deal with. Wait, you never said who you are. They call me Nellie, Nellie McClung. Rabble rouser, suffragette, and the brass orange who's going to get the women the vote one day and get us all out of here. They threw me in jail because I wanted a voice, and they thought that was criminal. Times change, though, Ace. You watch. They're going to put me on a stamp one day. Now let's get out of here. Nellie McClung, I heard you speak when I was just a little girl. You inspired me. Um, I hate to interrupt, but if we don't find the key to W.T. Pooh's cage, the bear is getting left behind. Keep your bum pants on, Gordon Gordon, and let me think. I'll find it. Oh, I'm good at finding things. Just retrace your steps. It's always in the last place you think. Hi, ho there. Perhaps I might be of assistance. Oh, it's so wonderful to hear your voice. Nothing like a kind voice when chaos rolls. Hmm, let's think. You're looking for a key. Ken Leishman held, hid gold bullion in a snowbank behind his house. Looks like over there, there's an approximation of that very snowbank. What do you think? Oh, just let me take a peek here. <gasps> it's the key! <laughs> Good showing, kid. Free poo! And let's bolt. Okay, come on out, poo! <laughs> in you go, guard! Oh no, get, someone's coming! Get back oh, in your dioramas, on. prisoner! Else I will have to use the lethal force! Go get him, poo! Ah! No, no, the mauling of the bear! Ah! Oh no, stop, please! All right, Pooh, ah! throw him in My the cage! My beautiful face! Ah! Good job. Throw him in the cage, Pooh. Ah! Let the Sun Queen deal with him. The rest of the normality police will be on their way soon. We'd best hurry. Are you coming with? What happens if I stay? Oh, you don't want to find out. Let's move. Fortune favors the bold. Okay. Hey. Oof. Ah. 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 Come on. Slow down. Oh. Oh. Wait for Mabel. Oh. Ah. Ah. Oh. Into oh, the infinity room, crew. But, uh, ma'am, that's suicide. That means they'd be crazy to follow us. This is how we'll lose them. Fortune favors the bold. Can quickly kick off your shoes and put on these boot liners. We're going in. 
Where are we? The Infinity Room, a place so powerful that there are no shoes allowed. <laughs> An interdimensional tear where you meet a billion yous all ready to say hello. Just look at them. Hello. Hey hello. Goodness, it's like a new age reality show. Right, staying together is crazy sauce. We'll split up, meet on the other side. Gordon, you're with me. Leishman and Cornish, you two pair up and don't do anything stupid. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma Pooh, you and Mabel here. See if you can make it to the other side. Ah. And don't stop to talk to any ghosts. Oh, you're leaving me? You'll do fine, Ace. See you on the other side of the room. The infinity room. Good luck. Ah. Ah. Oh my, that's a fearsome sound. W.T. Poo. You know, I bet inside that frightening exterior loves a t lives a tubby little cubby all stuffed with fluff, am I right? <laughs> oh, I know all about you. Bill and I used to read your stories to our kids when they were little. We would take them out to play in our own little hundred acre wood, which was really only our backyard, but we had lots of fun. <laughs> oh, it seems like such a long time ago. Uh, Mabel! Mabel, where are you? Is that my imagination, or do I get a distinct whiff of denim? <laughs> it is denim! Mabel, Mabel, I miss you. Oh, Bill, I miss you too. Uh, you may be a subconscious projection of my inner desire for deep emotional connection, but I want to be with you again. I want to get out of here, out of this place. Do you know how I can do that? Why, of course I do, you silly goose. Oh. You just have to go up to one of these mirrors and do the secret knock. Come on, darling. It's date night. Oh. Now entering the Urban Gallery Movie Theater. For more information, press the melancholy button on your console. Oh my gosh, City Lights! This is my favorite movie! We saw this when it first came out. Our first date, I was so nervous. Oh, you are a perfect gentleman. I bought you popcorn. <laughs> I ate it all! <laughs> well, girls could eat back then. A healthy figure was in style. I held your hand through the whole movie. And I held yours back. Oh, Bill, it's been so lonely without you. Sounds like you've been really brave. Mabel Ferrarki has been brave. Christmas dinners, vacations to Bermuda. She's seen the world, had amazing adventures, and she has done it on her own. She worried that clinging to the memories of a basso and denim might, keep, might be keeping her stuck, like all these other folk here in the Negosphere. She thought about letting go and following her beloved to the next place. Oh, Mabel, it's so hard without you. Oh, Bill, you silly goose. I'll see you again very soon. But for now, I have people who need me and a lot of living to do. Ta-ta for now. You'll always be in my heart, Mabel. <coughs> oh, come on, Pooh. We do have a lot of living to do. Let's find our friends and get out of here. Will Mabel and her new friends be able to escape? Find out after this commercial break, brought to you by our sponsors, Dunbar's Toothpaste. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dames and dudes, are you feeling the squeeze of the economy? Well, your teeth certainly are. But my teeth feel fine. Fine for now. Did you know that chronic and persistent stress can lead to enamel decay, gingivitis, and eventually, Death. Why not try Dunbar's toothpaste? Made with the love and care that only a dentist could provide, and the only toothpaste with a newly discovered miracle ingredient, heroin. White hearty smiles and a warm fire injected into your arm each morning give you that clean, just brush your teeth feeling without the brush. Now my teeth are safe from the bugs crawling up my arms. There's the right way, the wrong way, then there's the Dunbar way. Cause you don't got money for toothbrush or any street crap. Maybe you just need Dunbar. Dunbar. It might be drugs. It's likely. 
This has been brought to you by Dunbar's Toothpaste. Great, Silkirk's ghost. You ladies are a sight for sore eyes. Oh, I'm sorry. I always thought you were a lass. Well, we thought we lost you, that's for sure. Mr. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. It's been quite an adventure. Where is everybody else? Uh, Cornish and Leishman were captured by the Normality Police in the Infinity Room. They stopped a moment to have a chinwag with some long-departed mistresses, and they were nabbed. Dames, what can I say? Mm. They've been taken to the Nonsuch for execution. Goodness gracious, what about Nelly? Uh, sorry, lass, she left us. Said she had other fights to fight. She told me to give you this letter and this sword. Dear Ace, sorry I had to skedaddle. I had too much to do to join you on your suicide mission, but listen, you're the only bear cat cuckoo enough to lead this merry band of wooden nickels into this great escape. You're their only shot to get out of this stuckness. This sword used to belong to Cuthbert Grant. Wiggle it well. Follow your guts, girl. Best of luck. Nelly. Oh. Oh, there she goes now, taking off in the Avro Arrow to fight bigger fights. Where'd she learn to fly a plane? Well, she is a suffragette. <laughs> I won't disappoint you, Nelly. We'll find a way. Well, it looks like you're the boss now, Mabel. What's next? Lord Gordon Gecko, let's go save our friends. Uh, but, ma'am, they've been taken to the nonsuch. It's the belly of the beast. A wise woman once told me that fortune favors the bold, Lord Gorgon Gorbachev. <laughs> Remember? Follow me. We're going back. Uh, 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 so far. Oh, no. Just try to, try to keep up. Oh, wait. Shh. Oh. Quiet, quiet. There they are. Looks like they're both tied up. Oh, this won't be easy. Shush! There's the Sun Queen. Keep down! People of the Negosphere, friends of the museum, Sultan Moose and his forest dwelling subjects. Hello. You see before you two of the most dangerous and discourteous men in all of the sphere. As punishment for their crimes, both past and very, very recently, the two prisoners are hereby sentenced to death in the most entertaining way possible. We will feed them to the vicious vampire muskies of the red. Oh, ho, ho, ho. To be fed to the vampire muskies is a truly vile fate. Make no mistake. <laughs> How very amusing! <laughs> Lieutenant, begin the very slow lowering of the prisoners. Yeah. Well, boss, what's the plan? Lord and Gordon, do you think you could get to that anchor? It might be tricky, ma'am, but I think if I hold my kilt high enough, I can do it. Good. Take some gunpowder and destroy that chain. I have inside intelligence that tells me that they have been weighing down the ship for centuries. I say that we let it fly! I like this plan. It makes great sense if you don't think about it too carefully. <laughs> what will you do? Pooh and I are going to get our friends. Are you up for that, little bear? Ah! Come on, Pooh! Let's rip! Whoa! What's that I see? A heavily armed woman riding a bear? Clearly it's time for me to... The moose! Take a hike, you silly moose! You? I thought I put you away for good. Oh, I... Mabel. Mr. Mr. Francis Cornish, we're here to rescue you. Oh, thank goodness you've come. I knew you would. Silence, prisoner. Guards, seize the intruder. Oh, oh cue the explosion! Release the anchor! What? <gasps> Abandoned ship! It's going airborne! The non such is floating away! Now, you fools! Ha <laughs> ha! Looks like you are in a spot of trouble, Sun Queen! If this is how my reign is to end, then by reared in steel, I'll take you down with me! What? No, no, don't point that gun at me! Never! <laughs> no, don't, don't point it at me! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Ah! 
one less stupid animal on the sphere. Oh, no, Pooh, no. Now, stand and fight me. You killed the Pooh Bear. That's it. Now it's personal for Piglet, Eeyore, and the Hundred Acre Wood. Get over here. Just take that. Good God, Leishman. She's a very skilled sword fighter for an old lady. Never underestimate the power of a gray-haired woman, Cornish. They're out of sight. Can you see what's happening? Uh, Mabel and the Queen are climbing the rigging. What, really? They have pivoted on the sail and are still fighting. The balance is incredible. Must be all that yoga. She just did a backflip over the Sun Queen's head. Oh, the Queen has her on the ropes. Has her up against the mast. She has nowhere to go. Oh, I can't watch. Oh, take that. Well, Sun newspaper conservative columnist Sarah McIntyre, tireless crusader and defender of the status quo, you're about to experience paradigm shift. Ta-ta for now, you right-wing magpie. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. No. No. You haven't heard the last of me, Meat Sack. Have a good trip, your majesty. That was so badass. Cornish, Leishman, let's get you both untied. Thank you. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, over, under, around, and through. Uh, it's not uh, a okay, over, uh, and you're free. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mabel. Leishman, can you fly this thing? Uh, well, I didn't call me the flying bandit for nothing. <laughs> Lord Gordon's garden, come out from under the deck. I wasn't hiding. Okay, boys, hang on to the ropes. We're going to bust this thing right through the roof. The non-such is going to fly us out of here. Oh, we're heading up. up. Okay, here we go. The roof is cracking. I, I can hear it cracking. Will the boat hold? Oh, my gosh. And we're through. Wow, we're flying. What a view. We really did it, didn't we? We shook the foundations of the negosphere. You know, from up here, it's a really beautiful place, Winnipeg. You made a really fine city, Francis. It is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I wrote a beautiful poem about it. Uh, so listen up. The days are long and endless. The sun does not take rest. Tis a barren, hostile country, and a man is put to test. Yet there's a compelling remote beauty in this land so fresh and clean with its waters pure as crystal and trout that few have seen. I've drunk of nature's beauty and I've suffered nature's pests. I've coexisted with God's creatures and I've met and passed the test. But this is strange, a special beauty. It's a land for special men. When I leave, I'll do so gladly. But I know I'll come again. I'll bear memories of kind people, of sunsets without end. I'll respect and fear the Northland, and I'll do so as a friend. I'll respect and fear the Northland, and I'll do so as a friend. Oh. Well, that was really nice, but I think I'm ready to go home now. It's been quite an adventure, and I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. You sure we can't convince you to stay? Thank you very much, Mr. Francis Cornish, but I think it's time for me to go back. <laughs> Mr. Leishman, plot a course for the meat space. Drop me near the museum. Here we go. <laughs> Goodbye, Mega Spear. Dude, you dropped that rod. 
careful. I had to go through a whole other dimension to get it back. I am so sorry, Mr. Autumnal Construction Worker. Nah, it's all good. <laughs> Got some people you need to meet, though. Your real adventure is still ahead. Jeepers! Well, I'm a little tired, but that does sound exciting. <laughs> it does sound exciting, don't it? But for now, I'm afraid that's all the story that's written, friends. Who knows where the next moment will take us? I guess if you want to find out what happens to old Mabel, you'll have to tune in next week, where these fine folks might take you further down the rabbit hole. It's a big universe. Lots of folks, I reckon, are in need of my modest assistance. Good night, everyone. Press three when ready. Next week, meet Dale Weeb, a 40-year-old with a wicked booter. Forced to live in his parents' basement after the economic downturn in Calgary. Bay Days, Meat Shoulder, Lotto Trees, The Paddle Wheel. Will Dale ever call Winnipeg home again? Find out next week on 204 FM with musical guest Joey Landreth.